Yo, what is up everybody? Jumping here and today I am actually going to give you my take on something that I feel is extremely serious and I definitely wanted to talk about it because the media has reported on this but they are not telling the full truth. And that is we are going to be talking about the debt ceiling today. So if you're not interested in politics and you don't care, you might not want to watch this video. But I will give you some information that you probably haven't heard if you've just been watching your mainstream media. Now, the first thing I want to talk about just real quickly is that I'm playing some Dead Island. This is what you see in the background. I've been playing this game a lot. It's been really fun. It's old as shit. I'm not going to do a series for it. I got Dark Souls 2 coming out. I got Titanfall coming out. But if you're wondering what this is, it's Dead Island. Alright, so let's go ahead and get into this whole debt ceiling debate. Now, every once in a while, you will hear about this so-called debt ceiling. And I would say that, uh, especially with younger people, they might not even know what that actually means. But it's actually super simple. So I'm going to quickly explain what is the debt ceiling. Alright, so we have our debt, right? Which currently is $17.4 trillion. I know, it's pretty ridiculous, right? Especially since if you're a young person, we're going to be the ones paying for it. Yay. So we have this huge debt. And that is our government ginormous fucking debt. Now, they have to set a limit, which is the ceiling, to the debt every once in a while. And the only reason why we're so in debt is because we borrow all this money. I mean, that's what debt is, right? You get out a loan, and there you go. You're now in debt. So we borrow a lot of money all the time from China, from Japan, from Europe, from, from everywhere. Everybody loans us money. Now, the debt ceiling idea is that every time that we are borrowing money, we have to go through this process to decide through Congress, do they want to raise the ceiling or do we want to start to actually pay our debt? See, what's really funny, in the last whole debate about the debt ceiling, Obama was coming out. Remember, this is around the time of the shutdown and all that craziness that went on, which, you know, the government shut down, although it really didn't shut down because, it, to me at least, it seemed like government was pretty much functioning. The only thing that they kind of shut down was things that they really didn't need to shut down. You know, like uh, certain parks, and uh, I know uh, they were talking about a panda might die or something in a zoo. It's like, what the fuck? Like, what are you talking about? Like, this is ridiculous. Like, why would they shut that down? Why don't they shut down the IRS or something really stupid like that that nobody likes? But of course, you know, they're not going to shut those things down. They're not going to shut down our military. So, back to the actual debt ceiling discussion. Now, basically, they have to raise this ceiling to borrow more money very simple and Obama was saying in the last debate that and it was so funny that he was actually trying to explain this and I don't know why he was saying this either there was two possibilities either he's an idiot or he's a liar because what he was saying is that by raising the debt ceiling it doesn't mean that we're gonna actually get more debt what he was trying to do was to sell to the American people that you know hey don't worry about it we raised the ceiling you don't have to pay any more money. We're not going to get any more debt. What the hell is he talking about? That's the point of the ceiling. If you have a credit card limit, and let's say that limit is $5,000, okay, and you reach that limit, well, if your credit card company is willing to up it to $7,000, well, that means that now you can put another $2,000 on. So that's really simple, right? That's exactly what they do with the debt ceiling. They raise the ceiling and they put us as a nation into more debt. Now you might be wondering, why do they allow this to keep happening? Well, because they set their own fucking limit. That's the problem. I mean, it, there's no point to really have a debt ceiling. Let's be honest. Why have a debt ceiling when you're going to raise it every single time? The average person can't do that with a credit card, right? You can't go to your credit card company, which... In the case, what I'm talking about, you would even need to go to your credit card company. You would set your own limits. It's like, well, right now, I'm at my $5,000 limit. I need another 3000 I need to, you know, borrow more money and never pay it back. But Obama, what he was saying, and what he was trying to sell to everybody, and I'm sure he'll continue to do this if this is ever up when he's still president, is that by increasing the debt, we do it so that we can pay our bills. That's the, that's the reason. And if we don't increase the debt ceiling, we're going to default. 
oh no and if we default we're going back in a recession the whole world's economy is going to collapse all the banks will fail you know there's going to be fire and destruction and hell will rise on earth end of the world shit right no not really because they would never default that's all bogus right now the interest they have to pay is like 200 and something billion dollars and they collect like 12 times that much in taxes so why the hell would they ever default they would only default if they chose to default which they would never choose to default the only reason why they talk about this kind of stuff is because they want to get the american people scared they want to make us believe that if we don't increase our debt then we're all fucked but unfortunately I mean, it just doesn't make any sense, right? Because that would mean that we're basically telling the people who are loaning us the money, the creditors, we're never going to pay you back. Because if we cannot borrow more money from our creditors, we cannot pay our creditors. Hmm. So basically what we do is that we borrow money from Japan to pay China, and then we borrow money from China to pay Japan. And in some cases, we probably even borrow money from China to pay China. Sounds really fishy, right? Now, there's a name for that. What is that called? Oh, I know, a Ponzi scheme. If you know anything about Bernie Madoff, look him up. If you don't know about what the crimes he committed, look him up. It's the same thing. He was borrowing money from Peter to pay Paul so that he could basically steal from Peter and Paul. That's all it was. He was never going to ever pay any of these people back. He ripped them all off. And that's what we're doing right now to all these other people. To all these other nations that are loaning us money. Our creditors. So we're never paying the money back. We're not going to do it. So eventually we will default. I mean, there's no way we're not going to default. How are we going to pay this? Now, now that you know what the debt ceiling is, because it is important. We need the ceiling there, at least to have a debate. Because maybe one day... Maybe one day they'll decide, you know what, let's not increase the debt ceiling. Let's not take on any more debt. Let's go ahead and cut some spending instead, right? Let's reduce government just a little bit, right? We could probably cut a little bit of defense, and a little bit of benefits, a little bit of workers. We could probably do that, right? Pay a little bit of it off. Because that's what would happen. We would start to actually pay the bills. See, if you don't increase the debt ceiling, then you have to pay your bills. That's the way it works. If you increase the debt ceiling, you don't have to pay your bills. You can just keep borrowing more money. So I, I don't know why Obama was talking about what he was talking about. I mean, you can look up the clips. I'm not making this up. But this is really basic stuff. You increase the debt ceiling, you don't have to pay your bills. You don't increase the debt ceiling, you have to pay your bills. So what part of this did Obama not understand? Why would he come on TV to talk to the American public and tell them that if we increase our debt ceiling, it doesn't mean we increase our debt, and it means that we pay our bills. It's the complete opposite. There is no way that the president of the United States can be that stupid. So what does that mean? It means he's a liar. And we already know he's a liar because of the whole, if you like your existing health care plan, you can keep it. Well, that was a lie. He's a liar. Now, you might be wondering, what actually happened with this debt ceiling debate? Well, if you were listening to the mainstream media, they would have said Congress passed the debt ceiling with no drama. No drama. What? Everybody was expecting this huge debate. We, you know, we're going to be facing down with another shutdown. Yeah. Didn't happen. It was pretty cut and dry, right? And that's how the media portrays it. Oh, they increased the debt ceiling. No big deal. Okay. But they're not telling you something that I'm going to tell you right now. They did not increase the debt ceiling. They pretty much, as of right now, abolished it. There is no more debt ceiling. Basically, what they have done is they have put it off to a further date. And I believe the date is maybe March 2015. It might be 2016. See, I don't remember 2016 or 15. I have to be honest. I, I need to look that up. And I didn't look it up before I started doing this. I should have done it to get all my information 100% correct. But that is what they've done. They have pushed this whole debate in the future. So what does that mean? That means that now the government can basically take on as much more debt as they want until that point. So to me, that definitely means we're going to $20 trillion. 
Like, there's no way by 2015 we're not going to be at 20 trillion. Because if it would have been 18 trillion, well, then guess what? They would have had to do this all over again at 18 trillion. Would they have increased it? Oh, yeah, because they always increase the debt ceiling. So, honestly, there isn't a reason to have the debt ceiling. So, you might be wondering, why don't they just abolish it? Pretty much they have done it. But they will have to retake this up again when the time comes up sometime in the future. But why, you know, if they're always going to increase the debt ceiling, if they're always going to borrow more money, why don't they just abolish it, right? Why, why do we need to do this every single time? Why do we need to face the government shutdown, you know? Why do we go through this drama? Well, because politicians are hypocrites. They are all hypocrites. See, here's your problem, is that politicians do not want to vote on something like that, to abolish it, to say no more debt ceiling debates. It's unlimited. We can have as much debt as we want. They don't want to vote on that because if they vote yes on that, they say, you know, okay, yeah, let's do that. That means they're on record for basically voting for the debt because all the politicians want to say that they're against the debt, but they're really not. See, they're all for the debt, because the more debt we have, the more money we borrow, the more the government grows, the more power they get, and that's what they want. They need the money so that they can divvy out certain things to certain groups, because they want to buy their votes with free stuff. Unfortunately, what you have to understand is that that free stuff is pretty expensive. That's why we're in debt. So this is what they do. They look at certain blocks or certain groups, and they'll say, what can we give this group? that will buy them, will buy their votes, make them dependent, and yeah, that's exactly what happens. Obamacare is a great example of this, especially with women. You know, they sold a lot of it on, if you're a woman, you have a pre-existing condition of being a woman, you know, you might get pregnant, yada, yada, yada. Women, especially young women, pay more for health care compared to men, and women didn't like that. They thought that was unfair, so... When Obamacare basically said, if you're a woman, you don't have to pay more than men, it's going to be equal now, women jumped on that. They thought that was great. You know, unfortunately, the government doesn't really understand how insurance works, and that's why Obamacare will not work, and that's why it sucks. But that is a whole other subject for a whole other video. And if you want me to talk about Obamacare sometime, I will tell you the truth about Obamacare and how it will not work and how it's going to collapse, and how you're going to have to pay more money. It's ridiculous. But, like I said, Obamacare, a lot of it was good, you know, good for the Democrats with women, because a lot of the stuff in Obamacare was good for women. And that's what they wanted. They wanted the votes. And they got the votes. Unfortunately, now we're finding out that a lot of the stuff they said wasn't really true, but, you know, that's politicians. Now, one thing I really need to mention and I have to talk about this because it's so important because I don't like the Republicans. I hate the Republicans. I hate the Democrats. I hate them all. But I really need to just talk on the political end of this because this was such a good opportunity for the Republicans to do something. But I talked about this earlier. They're pussies. They're afraid of pu the public looking at them negatively. And if they do, then they're going to lose their votes, right? They're going to lose some votes. They're going to lose the election in 2014. And, yeah, they're going to lose power. And they want power, and they think that, you know, right now, Obamacare is a hot, you know, hot topic. A lot of people are against it. A lot of people lost their coverage. Those people are going to be totally probably voting Republican because they're like, yeah, this Obamacare shit was kind of bad. We lost our coverage. Or you have all these millions of people who are paying more now, and they're like, Wait, I thought this is Affordable Care Act, not the really, really expensive Care Act, but it is. So, here's the thing. The Republicans have been trying to fight Obamacare like crazy. They've been trying to get rid of it. Now, there was one thing they could have done. Now, would this have worked? I don't know. But this was, this was such a golden political opportunity to, to do something. One of the many hidden things about Obamacare was insurance bailouts. The insurance companies, if they lose money because of Obamacare, they will get bailouts from the government. And I would say the majority of people are kind of against these bailouts. A lot of people were really upset, and that's from both sides. You had 
Tea Party, which is super conservative. You had Occupy Wall Street, super liberal for the most part. And yeah, these people were so against the bailouts. And guess what? We have insurance company bailouts. And what are insurance companies? They're big, evil corporations trying to squeeze the little men. And the Republican Party is pretty much considered big business party. They care about the corporations. They care about the rich people, right? Well, this was their opportunity to basically say, listen, you want to raise this debt ceiling or you want to get rid of it for a while? Sure. But we want to get rid of these bailouts. Take them out. Write them out of the law. You keep the law, get rid of the bailouts. Unfortunately, without those bailouts, I don't see Obamacare working because unless the insurance companies have to charge people even more, they will lose money. And if they lose enough money, enough profits, they will go under and you will have a collapse of the health insurance companies. That's how, what will happen. So those bailouts, they have to be there. And Obama knows this. And the Democrats probably know this. So if the Republicans were to push that issue, if they would have done this, then that would have been a golden opportunity. Because guess what? If Obama would refuse and the Democrats would refuse to get rid of the bailouts because, you know, it's all or nothing. Because you got to understand, they talk about compromise, but what is compromise? I mean, last time there was a shut shutdown, if I remember right... The Republicans agreed to everything that the Democrats wanted. The only thing that they didn't agree to was the funding of Obamacare. Well, then that went to the Senate because the House is – the majority is Republicans. So if that bill, which was the Republican bill, was written by the Republicans in the House, then it goes to the Senate, which it was rejected because of the Obamacare thing. So there was no compromise there, but in the end, of course – you got the Republican terrorists because they shut down the government. They basically were trying to uh, murder people and bring chaos and anarchy. Who knows? That's basically what the media said. But, you know, this is what I'm saying. It's really ridiculous. So the question was, would the Democrats compromise? They would not have. They would have basically stood behind those bailouts. So the entire American public would know, wait a minute, you're telling me the Democratic Party – is for big business bailouts? What? No way. That would have infuriated a lot of people. And it would have been a golden political opportunity that they did not take. They basically said, listen, we have a really good opportunity with how many people hate Obamacare. They're not liking it. A lot of people lost their coverage. Let's bank off of that. Let's not shut down the government. Let's not cause any problems. Let's stay under the radar until the elections in 2014. And then you know what? We might win on this. We might take the majority. But it's fucking sad because look what they did. They sold out the country. And honestly, you can't just blame the Republicans because the Democrats, well, they pretty much did this too. This was a compromise but fuck what does it mean it means that the government now can spend as much as it want it can borrow as much as it want and we're going to go deeper and deeper into debt that one day has to be paid for and the question is who's going to pay for it is it going to be our generation or is it going to be our kids that's fucked up right it's ridiculous that the people of the last generations are now putting a burden on us to deal with it's really dangerous. You have to understand that. Right now, we have a government bubble. Just like you had the real estate bubble, and before that, you had a tech bubble, which was a stock market bubble. You have these bubbles, right? You might have heard these terms before, but right now, we have a government bubble. And what's going to happen if the interest rates go up? That's what you have to realize and you have to think about because right now the interest rate has been ridiculously low for years. It was at 1% for a long time. Now it's at zero. The amount of money the government has to pay to service the debt is so small compared to what it will have to pay if those rates go up. So 
The question is, you can do the math. You know, think about it. Okay, one year from now, let's say the debt does get up to 20 trillion, which it will eventually anyway. Let's say it gets to 20 trillion. Well, what's 5% interest rate on 20 trillion? What's 7%? What's 10%? It's possible. 10% is very possible. There's no way the government can pay that interest. We will have to default. All this talk about not raising the debt ceiling it means that we automatically default. That's all bogus. That's all bullshit. But if the interest rates go up, we will default. There's no way around it. We cannot pay that money. The government doesn't even collect enough taxes to pay 10% interest rate on the debt. So... In the end, like I said, we're fucked. And you might be wondering, why is the interest rate so low, right? That sounds really ridiculous. Well, because, see, when you have low interest rates, I'm just going to give you a little, a little bit of economics, and then I'm going to end this. When you have low interest rates, it does one of two things. The first thing is it totally discourages savings. There's no point to save your money or to put it in a bank. If you have money, the best thing to really do is to spend that money. Now, if you have a lot of money and you're really rich, then yeah, you can probably get some interest. But if you're just the average guy, middle class, poor, no point to save your money at all. Just go out, spend it, spend it, spend it. The other thing it does is that it encourages lending and it encourages borrowing. So what does that mean? More debt. But this time it's for the people. See, right now, we have a government that's out of control, that ha is ridiculously in debt. Yet all the corporations are in debt. The banks are in debt. The people are in debt. Our society right now is nothing but consumption and debt. That's all it is. We are taught this at a very early age. Just think about it. When you were in high school, maybe even middle school, you probably had your parents, friends, teachers telling you, listen, you have to have good credit. Well, what does that mean? That means you got to have good credit so you can borrow money, so you can put yourself in debt. Because you need a car, you get the car, you, you build your credit even more, and you got to go to college, right? Well... Honestly, I could talk about college for a whole video. If you guys want to know a little bit about my take on college, it's crazy. I love talking about it too because it's so ridiculous, our system. But there is a difference between student loan and the rest of the debt I'm about to mention. And that is the student loan is guaranteed by the government. See, when you take out a student loan, banks will actually loan you that money. Some people don't know that. They think it comes from the government. No, it comes from banks. But the difference is, is that because it's guaranteed by the government, if you can't pay, and God knows you probably won't be able to if you can't get a good job, even if you do, you might not be able to pay. But yeah, so the bank gets its money. If you can't pay, it's guaranteed. Bank gets its money. The college gets its money too. So the banks and the colleges, they walk away the winners. You're the only freaking loser. You and, well, the taxpayers. Okay, so you got your, your, your college student loans, right? So now you have a mortgage because if you went to a university and you know maybe you stayed uh, on campus, you probably got a mortgage at this point. And you're still, you know, 20, 19, 23, you just got out of college, 24, 25, who knows? That's ridiculous, right? You're starting life and you're already that indebted, but... You know, hey, that's 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 the American dream, guys. So what's next? Oh, well, you know, probably when you were going to college, you know, maybe you had a part-time job. You know, you were go-getter. You were going to school, and you had a part-time job. Good for you. So while you are doing that, you also got a credit card. So now you got that credit card bill. You got to constantly pay that. And if you're not careful, you might have a lot of credit card debt. That would be kind of bad, right? And the final dream of life, the American dream as we know it right now, is to get married, start a family, and guess what? Buy that home. You got to get the home. You got to get the mortgage debt. So there you go. Our lives are just surrounded by debt. That is what America is all about now. It's consumption, endless spending by the government, 
by the people, by the corporations. Everyone spends. There is so much debt, it's absolutely crazy. And you have to be so naive to believe that this system of endless consumptions and endless borrowing and debt can sustain itself? You got to have your head examined. This is going to be a disaster. We are going down as a country. And my best advice to you, you might want to consider learning some Chinese.